Hello everybody and welcome to Wesley's Plant World and today I have a video about the reorganizing of this lovely plant I have in front of me here. This is my Hoya Pubercalix Royal Hawaiian Purple and I've had this plant for probably around two years and I've kept it in this circle shape in this pot since I've had it but I've wanted to redo this for a while because I actually don't like them being shaped like this. It's not really a shape that appeals to me so I would rather have them growing out with their long tendrils up something or hanging down. I think they look much more natural like that and I actually did this with my Hoya Pubercalix Splash I put it on a frame, like the metal frame I have next to me here. So have a look at this. This is my lovely metal frame. Look at that top on it, it's gorgeous. And it has a lot of detail around the edge. Look at this, all the way along. This is over a meter tall and perfect for having a Hoya growing around or any other kind of vining plant, actually. The other frame I had for my Hoya Pubicalic Splash was thicker than this. And I had to plant that plant in a thicker pot, but it worked out and that plant's doing really well. So, what I need to do is get this plant into this terracotta pot, get the frame into the pot like that, so it stands up as a beautiful art piece. I am expecting this plant to grow all the way up and down this frame straight away because it's probably very long. It's been wound around this frame quite a lot. So we'll see how much of the frame it feels straight away. I think this is going to be gorgeous. But there is a problem because this plant has a very thin tendril growing around here. They've thinned out a lot and I can see some areas are actually completely dry and dead and they're intertwined with those that are fresh and alive. So it could be difficult for me to unwind this and I'm probably going to well, inevitably going to snap some of these tendrils. But as we know, this is not a problem. This kind of vining plant, you can go and propagate anything that breaks off. And if you water propagate it, this will get roots within a week, no problem. So I'll do that. If that happens, it will be fine because it's going to be in a much bigger pot now. So I'll be able to reintroduce those propagations back into the pot and put more around the frame. So I'm not worried about anything that breaks off, but the problem is getting it out and unraveled and so forth. We'll see how this goes. And I bet some of you have tried this yourself, right? In different ways to have your plant hanging or up something else and thought, oh no, I've snapped it and broke it, but then it started growing out again. We'll see. Let me get on with this. So the first thing I need to do is make me some space. And I don't really know. I'm not going to be able to put the frame on the pot without having unraveled everything. So the way I'm going to try and do this is repot this into this pot first so that I have it stable then start unwinding it and let it hang forward over the pot. And then I will have to try and hover the frame over the pot while I hold the tendrils up in the middle. This is my idea. We'll see if that's what I stick to as we go along. <laughs> so let's get on with this. La da da It's always so much fun doing things like this with my plants. So right, I just want to explain another problem here because I know that some of you that have Hoyas and some of you Hoya experts out there are going to freak out with what I'm doing right now. It is not advisable to go and get a Hoya that's in a small pot like this and then place it into a huge pot like this. Whenever potting up a new plant, you should 
If you have the possibility, patience, or the means, or it's the way that it will fit into your space, only put it up to the next size up. But to get this plant onto this frame, I need to be able to get the frame into the pot, so I have no choice. I am going to do this experiment and try it and see what happens because I did exactly the same with my other plant. It was in a tiny pot and then I put it in a huge pot and it is still alive and doing very well. So I know it can work, but it's not a suggestion. If you only have one plant and you really want to keep it safe, then don't do this. But if you have the means to be able to get yourself another plant, if something happens, then by all means, copy what I'm doing and experiment for yourself, because why not? This is quite an easy to get higher plant, so you should be able to get yourself another example if the experiment goes wrong. But I'm expecting this is going to be absolutely fine, so I'll go along with it. But if you do have a very rare kind of hoya, don't do this. Keep your hoya safe and make sure you follow the experts. Right, soil. I've made my own soil as well. So hoyas, they like a soil that is airy, light, they are epiphytic plants, so they don't really like to be sitting in soil at all. They'd rather be hanging on a organic tree, bark, or something like that. But we keep them in pots. So what I've done, I've just used what I have. And if you want to go out and buy some soil, a soil that would be good for this plant is a cactus and succulent kind of soil, where it's a soil that's been mixed with fine sand or grit and something like that to make sure the soil doesn't compact and to make sure that the water can run through the soil. That's very important for this plant. They do not like to sit in wet, boggy soil. That will rot them out straight away. They really do need to be allowed to dry out between waterings so you know that you're not watering them too much. Or at least just test that the soil is only slightly moist and loose like this in my hands. So this is a gardening mix I bought that I had outside. I've mixed it with a lot of bark. You can use orchid bark or any kind of small bark. I bought normal bark for the garden. And I've also mixed it with fine sand, a couple of cupfuls kind of, to make sure the soil stays loose. This is what I did with my other plant. I've also put biochar in here. So there's a mixture of different things. I actually this time haven't, I think I did it with my last plant, I put perlite in there to absorb some of the moisture as well, but I haven't done that this time because I found that my plants in terracotta indoors and with the lower humidity and everything else that's going on in an indoor environment, they dry up very, very quickly in these pots anyway. So I don't really need anything extra to keep the moisture away because the moisture will be wicked out of the sides of this pot, top and bottom as well in no time. So they don't ever retain too much water unless you're constantly watering and the water hasn't got time to evaporate out. So I'm expecting this is going to be okay. So now I'm just going to put some of this soil in the bottom of this pot to get started. Handfuls, press down the bottom to cover the hole. Oh, I love my hands in the soil. I love my hands in the soil. There we go. Right, let's see how high my pot is. So this is in a plastic pot in a catch pot. So look at this, a very small pot, a very small amount of soil, straight into this big pot. I think I've got the height right because I don't want to disturb the root ball either. I'll just put one little bit more soil in before I move my plant over. So now let me just lift this plant up out of this plastic pot and see what happens. It will probably all fall apart. I can hear the roots crunching. Now it came up very easily. So this is difficult now because I need to use one hand to move that pot out of the way. Now you can see the roots, lovely white happy roots in this pot. So now I just need to put this straight in and fill around the edge of the pot with the soil to keep it stable. Some of the lower leaves are in the way so I'm going to have to use my body to hold the plant up. So I have both my hands getting into the soil here around my plant. 
So, clean my hands off a little, little bit because then I can carry on. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, what's happening? So now I am ready to deconstruct this Hoya Pubic Helix Royal Hawaiian Purple and I don't know where to start. <laughs> Do any of you know the feeling? Right, let me see. Um, gosh, this is, I just don't know how the frame is in the bottom, everything. Right, I'm just going to have to find an end to start with. Where? I need something to put all the debris in, that's for sure. So we'll just start and I'll start pruning off anything that is dry, dead or brown, snapped or whatever and we'll see what's going on here. I've found an end on this side here. So we'll start unraveling that one to start with and see how far we get. There's a lot of dry bits in the way, so if you come across anything that's dry, just go and prune it straight off so you get it out of the way. If it is in the way of the tendrils you want to get out. But at the same time, be careful that you don't go and cut off a lovely fresh tendril because then you'll have to start with a new propagation. And your tendrils won't be that long anymore. <laughs> They're really wrapped around each other, these tendrils, and I'm losing leaves left, right and centre and so forth. But that doesn't matter. This is half on, half not. So I'm going to cut this piece off and make a first propagation here. Nothing I can do about that, but it will be great to put in the pot after. So it's actually really nice because I'm getting rid of a lot of those dried and dead tendrils and see what's coming out of my plant. Lovely long pieces. And this is going to fill up that frame so magically. But it's a job doing this, I am telling you. So now I'm wondering if I can't just pull up this frame, at least out from one side, because that might help me release the whole thing, I'm not sure. No, it's, it's in, in a weird way. Oh, this is difficult. You know what? I've been fiddling with this for quite a while now. You won't notice because I've gone forward in time. <laughs> but this isn't working. I'm going to have to take this back up out of the pot to expose the bottom of this ring to try and get the ring out of the whole plant. This is going to get messy. <laughs> Oh dear, <sighs> such is life. So I did say we might have to just wing this a little bit. I've now got myself a glass jar that I can put my propagations that I get out of this plant straight away into. So I will chop above that one leaf there, that will grow out roots and this one will grow out roots. I could do two. I might as well do as many as possible, right? So I'll cut above that leaf. Those two leaves will become a propagation. That will become a propagation. And we'll leave those on the side for the moment because now I need to get this back out. So I need to roll up my sleeves a little bit because as I said, this is gonna get a bit messy. But I'm just gonna pull it up out of the center like this. And lay it on my tray. And now I'm going to try and get the ring out of this plant first. And I really don't want to disturb the roots so much, so we'll see how ingrained it is. Aha, it was just a little hook. That was good. And a little hook on this side. Okay, it's not too bad. So depending on how I can bend it a little bit, I might be able to start working it around. I've made it, I can say, halfway. So I might as well try now and see if I can do this on the other side. And so far I've only lost three small leaves, so that's fine. Right, we'll try and get the other side out now, see if this won't help much quicker. The thing is, you can't just pull it out at the top if you're thinking that would be an easier way because it's so tightly wound around. So you do have to put in the time and basically unravel the whole thing. Also, I don't have any tools to break and snip 
the wire off because if I had that then I would be able to break it into bits and get it off easier. So think about that when you're doing this, if you have some kind of tool to break the metal frame. But if not, this is the way you're going to have to do it. And it's working. So right, I've finally got all my tendrils out and I actually have five separate plants in this ball. So the problem now is going to get these all around the frame. That was quite difficult last time without snapping any of them. But now I need to get the plants straight back in the pot and hold all of these up inside the frame. I think this is gonna go okay now. Crossing fingers. <laughs> Let's go. So first, I just need to put the plant back in its hole. So now I'm going to just pull all of these tendrils up into the frame before I do anything more. I've just mixed them basically together. Put all these inside, because some of these ones here are pretty long. Get them inside. Get this inside first. This is the longest one. This one actually might be able to reach right to the top of the frame straight away. So get that in, oops. Oh, this is definitely right up to the top of the frame. That is fantastic. So now I've got this far. Now I need to try and get the frame up. And then I'll have to figure out the rest in a moment. So I just want to get these tendrils even higher up in as much as I can. Everything needs to get inside the frame. Let's put it up. It's becoming difficult now. I'm having to use my, <laughs> my minimal strength to hold this up while I do this. So here we go. So now have I got everything in? Right. And now I've got my plant above me in the way. So now I've got my woo, frame. I just need to make sure everything is in the frame. Let's have a little look. Is this all? Get in there. Get in there. Everything needs to get in before the frame falls down to the bottom of the pot. Oh, get in. Get in. Oh. So before I finally push the frame down, I lost the leaf, I need to get all these leaves around the bottom ring of this frame in. Otherwise they're going to get stuck under the ring. And the ring needs to be, I lost the leaf, needs to be at the bottom to hold it all in place. So, around here. So, right, I've got all the leaves in the bottom frame now. So I can finally start pushing the frame down into the pot. There's another leaf here that needs to come above the frame bottom. Everything is in. Oh, I lost another leaf here. So, get the leaves above the frame mark. That's what I need to do. So here, it's going pretty okay. So this was definitely the best technique. Now I've got all of my plant in the frame. Now I can start pulling it up. <laughs> this looks really good already. So now I've finally got to the part that I think is so much fun. And that is vining up this plant around this beautiful metal frame. So I'm going to have to take one at a time and vine it around to see how I place them around this. This one is actually so tall. It's so tall and I want to make it look like it's been growing around the frame, right? So I need to have parts of it growing around here and there. So this one side piece needs to grow in and around and out this part. This has actually got a lot more length to it than I thought. But I'm going to keep pulling up as far as I can go. So I'm going to actually go and pull it in the next small hole, which is up here. And I've seen the end has broken off, so I can make a cutting out of that. But I'm going to do it so that it goes across, so that I get the look of leaves growing all the way around and in this part of the plant straight away. So I have a cut in here, which is fine. This piece I'll make two plants out of. Oh, but well, there's a leaf there. 
there. So now I have another cutting and this one, cut the top part off and I have another cutting here and it's cut where I broke it. Another leaf cutting. So that's another one there. So that was the first piece done and it's all the way up to here, just about to go out of frame, but it looks fantastic. So now I'm ready to start on the second one. So here I had another casualty. This was quite a big piece, but it's not a casualty really. That's going to make me a lovely new plant together with all the other cuttings there. So we will just prune back here and make this into two lovely cuttings. That piece in the water and this lovely big piece I'll keep together just like that. That would make a lovely big plant. Wow. So here it is, my finished plant. I've got everything wound around. I've got everything tied up and it looks absolutely amazing on this frame, don't you think? This is much better than having it just wound around on a ring. There's so much more potential, so much more height, and I'm hoping this will carry on vining out for me now. I just love it. So now I have two plants in this style, and I have a few propagations here, so I can make myself a whole new little plant, or place these in the bottom of this pot to help fill out this one. So absolutely nothing has gone to waste. And that's the great thing about these plants. You can save everything and make new plants constantly. <laughs> now, I am ready to take you in for a closer look at this wonderful plant on its new metal frame. So, wasn't it wonderful to see the transformation? I suggest that you try this for yourself. If you have a Hoyer at home, that you know, as I said earlier, that you can get yourself a new example of if your project or your experiment doesn't work out the way you hoped. So I'm just going to keep an eye on this plant and see what happens. And if it doesn't work, well, I can get another one. And if it does, I'll be very happy. But I've had this plant a couple of years and I think it will do fine. The only thing I won't do now is I won't water this plant for a while. It needs time to settle into this new soil and there's also moisture in the soil. So I will leave it for a while before I start giving it a water. So thank you very much once again for watching this video. Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be coming up and I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.